for tonight. The theme for the 43rd anniversary of the 20th May celebration is a little bit long, but I'll try to give it to you. It says, defense forces and national vital forces acting in synergy to meet security challenges and preserve peace in Cameroon and in Central Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to start this evening with what we usually do, giving thanks to God and welcoming you all here uh, in prayer. The glorified God name for the continuous mercy and blessings he is offering to our sister country, the Republic of Cameroon, and Africa for that matter. And to also pray that he continues to guide and direct us <coughs> so that the conflict affecting our nations, our continents, and our peoples will be resolved amicably 
in a manner that pleases thee and in the supreme interest of our people. This we ask in the gracious name of Allah. Amen. God our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you most especially for the nation Cameroon on this 43rd National Unity Day. We ask you to bless each and every one of us who have come here today. We ask you to send down your blessings abundantly upon the food, the drinks, and all that we do here today. May we celebrate in brotherly manner for your peace, harmony, and law to exist between the neighboring Republic of Cameroon and that of Liberia and its people. We we'll make all these prayers with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. an address by His Excellency Mr. Benyela Augustine Gang, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Cameroon. See Mr. Elias Shonin, Acting Minister of Foreign Affairs and Representative of the Liberian Government. Honorable members of the legislature here present, Your Excellency, the members of the Cabinet of Government, Your Excellency, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, and my dear colleagues, <coughs> Madam Superintendent of uh, Montserrado County, Reverend Prelates, Mayor of Bainesville, Mayor of Monrovia City Council, distinguished invitees, I wish to express profound gratitude for your honor for the honor and friendship demonstrated to my country by your massive presence. This evening's reception is in celebration of the 43rd anniversary of the 20th May National Day of the Republic of Cameroon. Today's National Day holds a particular symbolism for us and our brothers of Liberia and sisters, of course. Just over 10 year, uh, days ago, 
Liberia, this glorious land of liberty, formally emancipated itself from the vicious scourge which swooped on us more than a year ago. On 14th, thank you. On 14th May 2015, Liberia also observed its Unification Day. The importance of unity is particularly understandable to us in Cameroon. Africa in miniature, epitome of pluriculturalism. <coughs> the recent auspicious events in Liberia have planted a pleasant decor and have provided oneness in spirit as Cameroon celebrates its national day in your beautiful and expanding capital city. Testimony of consolidated peace and restored confidence. Mr. Minister, the victory against Ebola was a collective tribute to the sterling leadership of President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. The Liberian people, too, deserve our praises for overcoming even those hard times when the final victory required submission to the drastic cultural and traditional adjustments which the President demanded. Some heroic Liberians Some heroic Liberians have dared Ebola by going into Sierra Leone to share their new expertise and to hold help their kinsmen and women. We pray that Liberia, uh, Sierra Leone and Guinea, with which I have also special attachments and supposed to be accredited there as well, may soon find similar uh, reasons to jubilate. Ladies and gentlemen, the Cameroon community in Liberia lost one of its eminent and untiring medical professionals to Ebola. Brother Patrick Shamze, whose photograph we have on the wall to the right here, who, like several brothers and sisters from friendly countries, was serving with the devotion at the Catholic hospital, died in the line of duty to save Liberian lives. We offer them, as well as the other Ebola casualties, a minute of silence. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We pray that they shall be remembered among the celebrated heroes, their families, also offered consolation. Excellency, Mr. Minister, over the last year, parts of my country were caught in the throes of a kind of human-engineered Ebola. Boko Haram repeatedly launched vicious and indiscriminate attacks against against innocent men and women, as well as against their properties in the extreme north western tip of Cameroon. As we speak, more than 150 schools are closed, cattle rustled, farms abandoned, mosques were attacked and razed, even as Muslims were inside in prayer. A quarter of a million Nigerians have become refugees in Cameroon. But for the valor of, our, of Cameroon's defense forces, this virus would have invaded large swaths of Cameroon territory for the south. Such terrorism, though circumscribed, has however been sufficiently dramatic to instill doubt in some foreign minds about the general security situation in my country. Rest assured, peace and development remain overwhelmingly dominant across Cameroon's 475,000 square kilometers of territory. Excellency, Mr. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, for the improving state of affairs in the far north zone, Cameroon is proud of its resilience, but we are also proud of the solidness of our external friendships. Boko Haram will soon find no hiding place as our Nigerian brothers squeeze its base camps. 
The Peace and Security Council COPAX of the African Union, meeting at its 500th session on 27th April 2015, assured us about collective support to ongoing initiatives jointly conceived by ECOWAS and ECAS, the Economic Community of Central African States. ECAS and ECOWAS have continued to hold numerous security meetings in which Liberia has played an active role. Chadian troops on the ground have been very worthy allies. Financial and, and other support has been made or proposed by such partners as the EU, UK, France, the USA, and others in favor of the multinational joint force, MNJF, set up by the member states of the Lake Chad Basin Commission and Benin. China and Russia have also been supportive. But these expressions need urgent reinforcement or concentration, concretization. Ebola should have taught us the consequences of even slight delays in the implementation of promises in times of crisis. In his customary end of year address to the diplomatic corps in Yaoundé on 8th January 2015, President Paul Bia declared, and I quote, a menace global, réponse global. That is, a global threat imposes a global response. He meant that our counter-offensive must be broad spectrum and cross-regional. Because we are all aware of the ideologies pretend and pretensions of our common enemy and the game of collusions across the Sudano-Sahelian belt and perhaps beyond, only time shall tell us more. The impact on our budget structure of sustained military de deployment since President Paul Bia declared, formally declared war on Boko Haram on 17th May 2014 has been enormous. But popular support of the Army and its Commander-in-Chief has been reassuring as an unprecedented. A voluntary fund for additional support to the Army was opened by President Paul Bia on 6th April 2015. It has, in less than two months, mobilized well over four million dollars in gifts of cash and kind from home and abroad, from households, from every administrative region, and from every religious denomination. And so, Boko Haram's claim to be the champion of noble Islam could have received no greater disavowal. How could it have been otherwise? Cameroon is the country of shared Christian, Muslim, and other fellowships during officially respected religious holidays, be it the Ramadan, the Eid al-Fitr, or the Eid al-Adha, Christmas or Easter. The success of the Hajj annual pilgrimage to Mecca benefits from government, monetary, medical, and security assistance, as well as from government facilitation of group travel by charter flights. We understand only too well the risks from religious, cultural, ethnic, or even linguistic intolerance and vexations of, of condescendence. Mr. Minister, another security situation affects part of Cameroon's eastern border with the Central African Republic, the CAR. In addition to our participation in peacekeeping operations, across the world, my country has assumed a very forward role in the MINUSCA, the UN peacekeeping mission in Central Africa. Besides, we are an inevitable corridor and lifeline to land landlocked CAR. The Central African crisis since 2013 and Boko Haram have therefore sparked a surge in Cameroon's enormous historic burden of hosting refugees and asylum seekers. Current credible estimates speak of around 300,000 refugees or displaced peace persons based in more than seven sites. This situation raises grave security menaces 
and concerns as well as challenges for our socio-economic focus. Thankfully, government continues to remain close to its deliverables as concerns the construction of port, hydroelectric, road, health and education infrastructures. Mr. Minister, numerous opportunities exist for gainful, adaptable and cost-efficient cooperation between Liberia and Cameroon. These include agriculture and animal breeding, agricultural research and training, sports, bilingual specializations, training for decentralization and local government experts, penitentiary officers, medical personnel, as well as the, ter the tertiary education and teacher training sectors, to name only a few priority areas. Several of these domains were identified and harnessed by past generations of leaders in Yaoundé and Monrovia. The Civil War and Ebola are over. Our diplomatic presence in each other's capitals, working at full capacity, can only contribute to a better definition of practical and realistic modalities for such cooperation. Some of our indigenous business pioneers have already initiated promising partnerships. The ideal of South-South cooperation between excellent historic developing friends demands no less. On this note of hope, I invite you, excellencies, honorables, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to kindly rise and if you have glasses filled, to raise them in a toast. To the very best health of Her Excellency Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, President of the Republic of Liberia. To the very best health of His Excellency President Paul Bia of Cameroon. And to prosperity, friendship and mutual respect between Liberia and Cameroon and between our two brotherly peoples. I thank you. Ambassador Bien Augustine Gang, <coughs> Doyen and member of the diplomatic corps, officials of government, members of the Cameroonian community in Liberia, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. As we gather here today to commem in commemoration and to share in the celebration of the 43rd anniversary of the National Day of the Republic of Cameroon, it is with great honor that I, on behalf of Her Excellency President Ellen Johnson Sully, the government and people of the Republic of Liberia, and in my own name, extend to you, Mr. Ambassador, and through you to His Excellency, Mr. Paul Bia, President of the Republic of Cameroon, the government and people of your great country, warmest congratulations and best wishes. Let me also extend to you, Mr. Ambassador, the warm congratulations of His Excellency, Augustine Bwehe Kafuan, who cannot be here today and always consider himself your brother. Since the establishment of diplomatic relationships between Liberia and Cameroon in the 1960s, the ties between our two countries have taken momentous height, grounded on our history and friendship and cordiality. It can be recalled, Mr. Ambassador, that Liberia was among the first countries to establish diplomatic missions at ambassadorial level in your beautiful country following your independence with the appointment of His Excellency Mr. Francis Marshall as our first ambassador in Cameroon, who, shared, who served so diligently to a pioneer a solid relationship which, was, which has flourished over half a century. This National Day has come, Mr. Ambassador, 11 days after the official declaration 
of the end of the Ebola outbreak in Liberia. Mr. Ambassador, Cameroon did not leave us to find our own solution during the period of the Ebola crisis. Instead, your government participated and lent necessary support to international organizations, including the United Nations and the African Union, which led to concrete actions on the ground in affected countries. Beyond lending international support, the government of Cameroon left the doors of its embassy open during the height of the Ebola crisis in Liberia, when options for air travels were rapidly being declined because of the Ebola scare. In this great spirit of partnership, we commemorate this day with the friendly people of Cameroon as we also together celebrate our own victory over the dreaded Ebola virus disease and Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, not only will posterity remember Cameroon for standing with Liberia during this very difficult period, but the solemn story of those who paid the ultimate price to provide care to Ebola victims cannot be fully told without the name of Brother Patrick in Jamzi, former director of St. Joseph Catholic Hospital, who contracted and succumbed to the Ebola virus disease in August 2014 while trying to save lives of others. Mr. Ambassador, please accept once again the condolences of the people of the Republic of Liberia for that great loss. Today, as we enter a new and important phase in our national development efforts, we look forward to deepening trade and commercial relations with Cameroon. We seek to shift the dynamics of our long and historic relations to exploring investment and trade possibilities across our two countries. While the optimism of a great future of mutual friendship is in the lens of our both country, we remember that this commemoration is taking place against the backdrop of a very significant humanitarian crisis along the Cameroonian Nigeria border as a result of brutal attacks by the Boko Haram terrorist group. We are confident that the resilient people of Cameroon will overcome this crisis very shortly. We urge the entire continent and the world at large to con in concerted effort to join Cameroon and other affected countries across that border to defeat this terrorist threat and degrade the capacity of Boko Haram to continue posing havoc on the peaceful people of Cameroon and Nigeria. On this yet another historic milestone of Cameroon, it is my added hope, Mr. Ambassador, that the bond between our two peoples will continue to grow stronger. With these very few words, let me say, long live the Republic of Cameroon, long live Liberia-Cameroon relations. And uh, I will try to respond to the very important uh, toast of His Excellency, of His Excellency, the Ambassador of Cameroon, in commemoration of this day. But I also say, Mr. Ambassador, Your Excellencies, Doyen and member of the diplomatic corps, officials of government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to request that you kindly raise your glasses and drink lustily to the good health and prosperity of His Excellency President Paul Bia of the Republic of Cameroon and the government and people of Cameroon on this historic 43rd National Day of the Republic of Cameroon. Thank you.